Join me in today's video as we discuss some of the best team based tips to be using in Apex Legends. Apex Legends is a game where you can't play solo and every time you go into a game you're always going to be in a team. This video is designed for everyone out there and without further ado guys, let's go. How are you guys all doing today? My name is Mirko and welcome back to another video on the channel. So as you guys can tell, I am pumped to be bringing you guys this video because Apex Legends is such a team based game and because you are literally forced to play with people in every game you play, I thought what better video to bring than to bring a tips video on playing as a team. Now before we jump into the video, if you go ahead and enjoy the video and you learn something new, be sure you're dropping a like down below and if you're new to the channel, definitely consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any of these future Apex videos. And now with all of that out of the way, let's jump into the first team based tip you guys should be doing when playing Apex Legends. Now the first thing we're going to speak about is keeping separated from your teammates. Now I'm sure you guys have seen pro players do this so many times when commuting around the map, you want to make sure you're about a grenade's length from each other. Now if you guys don't know what I mean, if you throw a grenade on the map, it's probably around 30 meters or so you want to make sure that you're keeping a fair distance from the other players now the reason why pro players do this is because when there is an enemy they spot the other two players can then come out from different sides and it then makes it really hard for the other team to focus on three different places at once also if it's vice versa and an enemy spots one of your players you can still come in from other directions and start putting bullets into your opponent the opponent won't know where them shots are coming from and as i said that's why staying apart is always the best thing because if you're grouped up all together that means the other team will be able to spot you and it's much harder for you to be able to flank them as well whilst doing this strategy you want to make sure that you're not spread too far apart to the point where if your teammate is getting shot at you can't get to them quickly enough you want to make sure you're just about the right distance that if your teammate is getting shot at you can run to them as quickly as possible another reason why you should always use this strategy is because it's much more easier to spot enemies in game as well if you think about it, if three players are on different parts of the map, you can spot enemies much more quicker and there's a higher chance of getting more kills. Most of my kills in this game has been from killing enemies that have been focused on shooting my teammates. That's why it's always good you should use this technique and this is a technique that's going to really make you successful as a team. Now the next thing we're going to speak about is quite an obvious one for some of you people but I'm a solo player and it's really frustrating seeing this happen when I'm playing in Apex Legends so I thought i would include this in the video. Now we're going to talk about stealing loot now i'm not specifically talking about death boxes that you get as soon as killing an enemy i want about the supply drops that are at respawn beacons now i'm sure most of you guys are aware where there is a respawn beacon usually you get around three supply drops sometimes you get two or one but there's something there at most respawn beacons and that's for a reason the reason for that is because if someone does get brought back into the game they haven't got anything and the supply drop is the only thing they're going to have to get whether it be armor or a gun if they're lucky and the fact is a lot of teammates including myself can be quite selfish when it comes to loot now i'm sure you guys can all admit it one time at one point you've actually stolen loot from your teammates or you've done something really sneaky which you shouldn't have done which has probably put the teammate at a disadvantage the whole point here is that you need to consider your teammates sometimes i know that's really hard especially because you want the best loot possible but for example i'd rather have one gun and the teammate have have one gun then me have two guns and a teammate have no guns to defend themselves with now you want to make sure that you know you're sort of making aware of what loot your teammate has if they just respawned in don't take their supply drops and take everything inside them because that's the only thing they're going to have unless they run quite far to get something else bearing in mind probably half of the map has already been looted so you want to make sure you're sort of you know them supply drops and specifically for people that drop into the map that have absolutely nothing some people will probably argue well they did go down they died so why can't i get first dibs well to me that's being selfish and that's not really playing part of a team that you should be doing in apex legends now the next thing we're going to speak about is understanding priorities now if you want to be the best team player you can possibly be then you want to ensure that you do your 
your best to ensure that every person is still standing and still alive in the game. Your two teammates are so crucial to get that victory, so even if you drop one player and you can't revive them, then that's really going to put you at a disadvantage going against enemies that are in teams of three. So you always want to have the mindset of, I'm going to revive my teammate. If I can't revive my teammate, I'm going to get their banner and I'm going to go to the respawn beacon as soon as possible. Now I know how much kills are so tempting, especially when there's enemies around you, but what you guys need to be aware of is it's very hard to 1v2 or even 1v3 people and it's so much more easier and more smarter to revive your teammates if you can. It takes about, I don't know, four to five seconds to revive your teammates or if you can't revive them, pick a time to revive them, maybe when you put a few shots into your enemies and they're reloading because honestly guys, you want to make sure your teammates are alive. I use Bangalore quite a lot and what I like to do is I like to use them smokes. I put the smokes on the person that's down and then I revive them and almost it's almost impossible for, for the enemies to shoot me if they don't know where I am and I'm inside the smoke and I always use a smoke to revive my teammates and for me, that's me being a good team player. So if you guys aren't using Bangalore, you still want to make sure you find the right time to revive your team mate because you don't want to be shot at whilst you're reviving them but the point here is always try and revive your teammates and think less about kills as tempting as kills are you want to make sure you're reviving your teammates and that is your number one priority. The only time you shouldn't be reviving your teammates is if there's an enemy chasing you or you're being shot at, if any of them situations are occurring. You obviously want to make sure you're not reviving the teammate and you deal with it in another manner, whether it's trying to finish off the enemy that's shooting at you or trying to find a safer location. By doing this, you can be that dream player that everyone wishes to match in-game. I always say treat people how you want to be treated yourself and think of it as the other way around if you were downed, would you rather the teammate go and chase them kills or would you rather the teammate revive you so you can both go and chase them kills together? Always revive your teammates, guys. That is probably the number one tip when playing in a team. Now, the next thing we're going to speak about is communication. I'm sure some of you guys guessed that I would speak about this at some point in the video, but I'm not going to give you basic tips like make sure you tell the teammate where the enemy is because that's basic i'm sure most of you guys are aware of that but what i want you guys to do is i want you guys to be aware of the health of your teammates because not every teammate is going to point out that they need health so you want to make sure you're aware on the bottom left whether or not you know maybe a player hasn't got blue body shield they've only got gray if you've already got blue body shield or higher why don't you ping it the ping system in Apex Legends is so good that you don't even need to have a mic to communicate well with other players. Apex have made it really easy for you to communicate with other players without having to have a mic. And using the ping system really helps when you spot enemy players, when you're rotating, and also other small things like if you find loot on the floor you think will benefit your teammates, you can ping literally everything in this game. So take the ping system to your advantage and really abuse this feature in game. And the last thing we're going to speak about is your team's approach. Now, if you spot an enemy in the near distance and your team aren't close to you, a lot of people in this situation will start firing shots and it will reveal their position and the other team will probably start pushing up towards you and this is a completely wrong way to approach enemies. Your team's approach is probably the most important thing which will determine whether or not you will come out on top against another team. So you want to make sure your whole team is in position before you start firing shots at your opponents because that way you won't be outnumbered and also you won't go down before your team even reaches to your point. As I said earlier, if you do spot enemies in the distance, be sure to ping them but don't shoot. Although it's so tempting to do it, I mean I do it loads of times. When I see an enemy, I really am tempted to fire a few shots. Uh, if they are shooting at you and they do see you and your team's not there just yet, just take cover and wait for your team to approach you. Once they've approached you and they're ready, then you can go into the gunfight. But till then, be sure to stay back and be patient because guys, this honestly pays off more. They're just firing at the enemies, they see where you are and they hear your gunshots and then it's going to be really hard for your team to come out on top in that gunfight. So anyway guys, I'm going to wrap this video up here. I hope you guys have enjoyed this team-based tip video. I wanted to bring this video out for you guys because I know how important it is working in a team when playing Apex Legends and there's not more of a video I wanted to bring out than this one because I know this video is going to help a lot of people out and as I said earlier if you have got any friends that you want to share this video to be sure to do that as well if this is the first video you've seen from myself and you're new to the channel first of all I'd like to say welcome and second of all I'd like to say be sure you're subscribing so you don't miss out on any of these future Apex
Apex tips, discussions, and also other gaming related videos. I've got some awesome Apex videos lined up for you guys, so be sure you're clicking the bell icon as well so you get notified every time a video goes live on the channel. So anyway guys, I'm going to wrap this video up here. Thank you all for taking time to watch one of my videos. It's always appreciated. If you did learn something new, definitely drop a like down below. And I'm going to catch all of you guys out in another Apex Legends video. Thanks for watching. Take care, guys.